right. How's everyone doing? Good. Good, morning. Good, good afternoon, actually, right? Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with uh, one of my favorite Bill Gates quotes, um, which is that in three years, he said this uh, back in the 90s, he said, in three years, every product my company makes will be obsolete. The only question is whether we will make them obsolete or somebody else will. And when he said this in the 90s, Microsoft was making everybody else's products obsolete. And it seemed like he was just making this up as a way to defend himself against the Department, Department of Justice that was going after him for uh, monopoly practices. But if he had said the same statement in 2006 when Microsoft was still on top of their game, uh, it would have been profound and a prediction of what's to come in the following three years. So if you think back in 2006, Microsoft was on the top of their game with Internet Explorer, with Microsoft Office, with Windows mobile phones, and with Microsoft Exchange. And those four products basically became obsolete over the course of the next three years. With Google Docs, with uh, uh, iPhones instead of Windows mobile phones, with uh, Gmail for companies, so all new companies are picking Gmail as opposed to Microsoft Exchange. Um, and uh, it, there's no way he could have possibly seen that, or most people could have possibly seen that, but it would have been a prediction of what's to come. Now, the sad part about this statement is whether you believe it or not, this statement applies to your company, right? So everything that your company makes can become obsolete within three years, and somebody else can totally take a leadership position in all of those things. And even more sad, especially if you're in software development and you're a software developer, the same is true about you on a personal level. Your knowledge, your skill set can become obsolete very, very quickly. There are just way too many different technologies to know about. In the software development field, this is just a very small fraction of the currently relevant stuff. This doesn't even take into account the hundreds, maybe thousands of different technologies that have come and gone over the past decade alone that are no longer relevant. This is just the relevant stuff right now, right? So, you know, how can you possibly keep up? It's nearly impossible, especially when you have a job to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And the real question is that most people want to know is, do I even have to keep up with this many different technologies? Now. This is an important question to answer in a definitive way. Do you have to keep up? Does your company have to keep up? Well, the answer to that question is a definitive, absolutely yes. If you, on a personal level, you want to be an A player who's valuable to your company, and of course, on a company level, the answer is yes, if you want to be around for long periods of time. Right? So this is a real problem that you actually have to solve. You have to know where to go, which direction to, to go, what technologies are important, and this becomes a very, very big challenge for tech companies. We, we are in a field that's like street fighting on a day-to-day -day basis, and some of the new entrants look like they have magical powers. Like they're, they're doing matrix stuff and slowing down time because of the new technologies that they're applying. And you know, uh, with just uh, t take into consideration like Uber, right? It has completely destroyed the taxi business, transportation business in general. Within a matter of probably less than three years, it has completely destroyed it. And it looks like they have magical powers, right? You can just call a car to come to where you are. And if you're not on top of your game, if you're not keeping up with the technologies, you will potentially die. So, the, you know, the real question is how do you do it? How do you keep up with so many? In, uh, in the development field, I, uh, my background is software development, so I used to program and write code. At best, a software programmer knows five or six of these uh, technologies well, and then maybe knows about a handful of the others. But there's no way to know all of them well. So how do you keep up? So what I want to tell you is a little bit of a story about how Axisoft accidentally solved this problem internally. Right? So to, uh, to sort of tell you the story, the story begins in 2005 when we were becoming more and more successful. Our product was reaching more and more customers and some of our customers had problems and this is back in 2005, so the ancient days where you actually have to download and install software in your own environment and run it. So some of our customers had problems that we couldn't replicate in our site. 
on our environment. So the solution to that problem was usually, well, send us your database, email it to us, and we can replicate it and hopefully see what you're seeing and be able to suggest what the problem is or if it's a bug, we'll fix it, right? But it turned out this email issue became a pretty big problem to solve because you couldn't email larger than 10 megabyte databases. So, you know, we were trying to rack our brains, right, to figure out how to solve this problem. And of course, we tried FTP and customers couldn't figure out FTP. It was a little bit complicated. And we thought, wouldn't it be great if you could upload the file into a website that we set up, our customers could do that, and there wouldn't be these you know, sort of file limitations, and then we could download it from this website. So, you know, web in, 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 uh, file service in the cloud, if you will, right? And we mulled over this, and we thought, this, is, this should be something that's pretty easy to develop. So, one of our engineers and I, we started sort of uh, brainstorming on what, how could we solve this problem. And one time over lunch, we actually diagrammed, this is a picture of the whiteboard, that we drew what this service might look like. So we drew up, you know, like it probably needs about four tables or three tables, and uh, it needs a Windows service to clean up the files after they expire. Uh, we need a couple of physical servers to run the whole thing on. Um, and, you know, there's going to be a web app and a SQL server in the background. We, we literally drew this up in the course of an hour. And then a few days later, we sketched up what it might look like, the interface to this thing. You just very simple, select a file that you want to send. So the idea was that our customers would go to this web website, select a file that they want to send, enter the recipient, maybe some optional settings, and then click send to send the file. And we thought, man, this is simple enough to where we should be able to do this in a weekend. But of course, we were focused on building our product, and we didn't want to sort of deviate from what we were doing on a day-to-day -day basis, making our product better, this seemed like a distraction. So we decided, hey, if we could do it in a weekend, that would be an okay distraction and it doesn't take away from work. So that's what we did. We started on a Saturday morning at 8 a.m. and on Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. we launched version one of what became transferbigfiles.com. Super simple service. This is exactly what it looked like. Version 1.0, copyright 2005 of the site, and you just chose your file up to a gigabyte in size, entered the recipient, in most cases it would have been support at accessoft.com, and hit send, and you were good to go. And the optional settings, we decided they, need to, they needed to be collapsed to make it simple. And all of a sudden, because we made it also public and for other people to use as well, this service started getting tons of use, and we were just beyond ourselves. In fact, I have a quote from myself back in 2005, this is an official quote. I was like, man, that was cool. I got it wrong. I said, huh, that was cool. <laughs> right? So we couldn't stop thinking about how awesome this project was because of how much we learned over the course of the weekend. We learned more in one weekend than we learned in months of our day-to-day -day job activities. And we're like, how can we replicate this so that as we grow as a company and as we add more software developers so that their skill sets continue to be improved and relevant. So about a year later, we came up with this idea of 30-day projects. And the idea was that we take after a major release of our product, after we stabilize the major release of our product, because usually after a major release, you have a bunch of bugs and you have to you know, stabilize it. So after we stabilize the major release of our product, we would take 30 days off and we would work on side projects. Um, and brand new project, I should say, that focused on learning new technology that we hadn't yet used or wanted to learn about. And the focus was going to be on this learning side of things, but hey, if we could make something useful during those 30-day projects, then great. If not, the learning was a real focus. And most of these projects ended up being throwaway, but a few of them were sort of gained some success, and you know, I wanna talk about a few of those right now with you guys. This is a service we launched a year after Transfer Bay Files in 2006. This was one of the first projects we created called Squeak. And back in 2006, there wasn't this um, feed of information coming to you like the way Facebook does and Twitter does now. Um, you actually had what was called Real Simple Syndication, or RSS for short, where lots of different news sources provided RSS feeds, and then you would go subscribe to these RSS feeds in a RSS reader, if you will. And 
What we thought would be cool is if these uh, RSS feeds came to you via email instead of you having to go out there and write search for them. So we created a project in 30 days that basically monitored all the RSS feeds that you were interested in. So you would just say, hey, I'm interested in BBC News or some random RSS feed that was giving you your company's bug lists and an RSS feed. And we would monitor that RSS feed on a regular basis. And if it changed, we would email you the changes. And we wanted to do that in real time. So we started a project from scratch. And the things that we learned during this project were ridiculous. We had to scale over 50,000 different RSS feeds that we were monitoring constantly. So we had to be smart about how we're gonna monitor them. The ones that changed frequently, we had to monitor more often. The ones that changed infrequently, like once every week, we uh, monitored less, uh, we pinged them less often. Otherwise, our one server that was dedicated to this project couldn't have handled it, right? So we learned a tremendous amount of things about uh, RSS, XML, syndications, um, scalability issues, uh, performance, network bandwidth utilization, things that would have never been learned had we been focused on our day-to-day -day sort of regular uh, job. And we brought some of those things back into our product as well. The next year, or a couple of years later, this is in 2006, when mobile development, the App Store had been launched by Apple, and none of us had any clue how to do mobile development. We didn't know Objective-C, we didn't, we'd never done any, uh, it seemed like this sort of, uh, you know, pie in the sky. We, we had no expertise doing mobile development. So if, if, for example, mobile would have been a big issue in 2009 for our product line or 2008, we would have been dead in the water. So we decided that, hey, we, we got to take our 30 day projects and learn about mobile development. So our goal was that in 30 days, we're going to have apps in the app store and one app per developer in the app store. So every person was gonna develop something new. Just whatever it was, it could be something gimmicky, some sort of game, tic-tac-toe, snake game, whatever it could, you could come up with. And going from no knowledge of uh, mobile development, no Mac development experience whatsoever, no Objective-C, our development team, which normally ran Windows and .NET, switched over to Macs and had apps, five apps in the app store within 30 days. By the end of that 30-day project, we had mobile development experience. Another one of the projects was a product called PureChat, which was intended for our development team to learn about WebSockets and Node.js. Again, new technologies that were very relevant, that are making sort of real-time communication possible. And this product ended up, after the 30 days, becoming so successful and getting used by so many different companies as a way to uh, chat in real time with their customers on their website that we ended up spinning it off into its own company and we've raised over one and a half million dollars for this new company essentially to um, to have it uh, be a separate entity from Microsoft. So those are some examples of our 30-day projects and basically the idea here is to have these 30-day projects be a way for you and your development team to learn technologies that are gonna be relevant to your business, that might make your business or your own personal skill sets obsolete, but to actually take advantage of those things and refine your business and refine your skill sets to make sure that you're the one who's going to make them obsolete. Make Bill Gates' statement about who's gonna replace you and your, your company's products with yourself and your, your company, right? And 30 days may seem like a long time, right? But if you look at it from the standpoint that 30 days is about 8% of a year, so 8% of a developer's time or a QA person's time or uh, a development manager's time, project manager, product manager, product owner, whatever the case might be, 8% of their time for learning and making sure that your company doesn't become obsolete seems like an insignificant investment. So that's the presentation actually, and we can just jump into Q&A if you guys have any questions about how we did it or, um, Anything that you want to talk about, basically. So we'll start over here.